Back in the day, when I occasionally catch an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds on TV, the motorcycles kind of threw me off. They just seemed so random and it didn't feel right. That's why I only watch the anime every now and then. But what can I say? Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds turned out to be way better than I expected. And since we've already been through Classic, GX and even Duel Masters, there's only one thing left to do. Jack Atlas makes his entrance on his Dragon Ball bike. But where there's light, there's also shadow. You say, cruising at 200 miles per hour on his freshly tuned D wheel. But it's a bit too lit. Just like Jack's opponent, who gets roasted against Jack's dragon and cosplays Ace. Rally shows up with a new chip, which you say immediately installs in his wheel and has to test it, because it's stolen and now a chase is on. Stolen, could you say? Well, let's settle that with a duel. Technically, people from the ghetto aren't alone to own cards, but for the right deal, Ushio from Season 0 is willing to bend the rules. Yusei has to play defensively, especially when Montage Dragon hits the field, rivaling the might of the blue eyes. With just 100 points left. It's time to trust in the heart of the cards and Synchro Summon. Yusei brings out Junk Warrior, who gets a boost from some Brotherhood power and starts landing punches. An effect gets countered, taming the dragon and the duel is finished. Junk Warrior end this! And that's how you turn something illegal into something legal. Get ready, Domino City. I'm coming. You say just can't shake off his old defeat against Jack. That loss earned Jack what many people seek the One Piece for. Wealth, power and fame. I mean, he literally has a house on top of a house. Oh, and he took Yusei's Stardust Dragon too. To make sure Yusei doesn't even get the chance of revenge, Ushio's deck gets pimped to beat Yusei down. He wants to head over to Domino City at midnight, which is only possible once a month. Before that though, he warms up by crushing a few randoms in a standard duel. One guy tries to imitate Weevil by using an insect deck, but accidentally knocks down his own life points. Still, he manages to wear Yusei down a bit. In response, Yusei double summons two monsters, synchro summons his Junk Warrior again and powers it up enough to play a spell card that wipes out all the monsters from Weevil Copycat and ends the duel. And it feels like there's no way out. As long as you trust in the power of your deck, you can find a way out of any situation. 45 minutes left until Yusei can cross over to the other city. He gets a card as a lucky charm and of course, there's always time for one more duel. Ushio catches up to him and forces a turbo duel. In the first move, Ushio blocks Yusei's speed counters. And without speed counters, there's no fun. And definitely no time. Yusei breaks the block, drifting into the main tunnel, where more obstacles block his view of freedom. Once again, Junk Warrior comes to the rescue. But Ushio's new deck let him synchro summon too. With that, he knocks Yusei down to just 50 life points. Tune out, gain speed counters, freeze Junk Warrior, and so he pulls off his next synchro summon. Junk Warrior digivolves into Nitro Warrior, who, with a turbo boost, destroys one monster, forces the other into attack position and strikes again. It doesn't have to taste good, it just has to work. Ushio is defeated and Yusei makes it to New Domino City, where Jack is already waiting for him. As a reward, Yusei gets his Stardust Dragon back for free, but he wants to earn it fair and square by winning a duel. And there's no better place for this showdown than the Kaiba Stadium. Now imagine it filled with thousands of adoring fans. All of them chanting your name and cheering you on. But that's something you're never going to experience, you say. You say starts off by playing defensively, but he takes some direct damage right away. The hamster returns to clear the path for Junk Warrior, who clears out a bit of junk. You say deals some damage, but Jack doesn't care at all. The need for speed! He summons a huge golem, uses it to smash one of Yusei's monsters, adds more rocks to his collection to summon his signature monster with the synchro summon, the red dragon arc fiend. But he's not done yet. He uses the rest of the stones to summon Yusei's signature monster as well, the stardust dragon. Anyone else would be intimidated, but not Yusei. Even as his monsters get destroyed and he is hit directly by his own stardust dragon. 
I mean, if you came here to throw down or whatever, why are you acting like that scared kid from the playground? It's called strategy. Sonic Chick will turn the duel. It manages to destroy Stardust Dragon. Nope, it's back. But with a little persuasive maneuver and trap card style, Yusei manages to bring it to his side. He powers his old friend up, which gets countered. But something is off. Both of their arms begin to hurt and the city's power generator is going crazy just as the two dragons clash again. Yusei manages to save his Stardust Dragon and suddenly both players not only end up with glowing tattoos, but a dragon made of energy appears. The city's power is out, the energy dragon fades away and the duel? Well, that's paused for now. Sure, their D wheels have taken some hits, but Yusei is surrounded by the police since he's there illegal. In court, Yusei is sentenced and they slap an ID tag on him so they can keep track of him next time. On top of that, he's sent to a facility along with few others. Welcome to the facility, your home away from home, a warm bed, three square meals a day, everything the public miscreant could want. During a chat with the boss, not only does he realize Yusei is part of the tattoo gang, but Jack also learns that the blackout actually saved his ass. And as you would expect though, this facility is far from a vacation spot. Yusei is soon forced into a duel against an ex-pro duelist. Which is a bit hard though, without cards. Luckily, Tenzin managed to smuggle his deck into the facility and steps in for the duel. The problem is, Tenzin's cards are so terrible, he's beaten in no time. And even though hairstyles are pretty wild in Yu-Gi-Oh, he got one of the worst and is also a complete jerk after his win. So, it's Yusei's turn to step up with Grandpa's deck. We duel here for respect. I think it's about time you learn what that really means. While Yusei starts his first prison duel, Goodwin and Jack show up at his place, ready to spill everything about the Red Dragon flowing through all of these things, binding them together. So it's glue! You've sworn allegiance to magic glue! Long ago, a civilization in South America used the Dragon Star to rise to power, casting shadows into the abyss. Ever since, this darkness has been lurking underground, drawing its strength from human emotions. The only force capable of keeping it at bay is the Tattoo Gang. So I'm supposed to save the world? Why didn't you say so? In the duel, Yusei uses his cards strategically, turning the curse of certain cards to his advantage. He redirects a curse to his opponent, protects himself with another and even manages to win the entire duel without launching a single attack by himself. But Yusei is caught again and has to go to the director. I'm sure it smells better than what you're used to in the satellite, as does my anchovy and onion breath, don't you think? They are looking at his body to find his tattoo. But first, he gets a bit of a backstory rundown on his fate, the destinies of all five signers and their dragons. Meanwhile, his smug brother in arms no longer sees himself as a champion after losing to Yusei. Even so, he's got to defend his title against the former champion who's putting some heat on him. Jack pulls out a powerful counter, summons his dragon and turns the duel back in his favor. Nice little dragon, you don't really want to attack me do you? Yusei refuses to cooperate, so he's punished by being thrown into a new prison block. To get the mark out of him though, they need him to want a duel. But his new cellmate has other ideas. He's got an escape plan in the works, complete with a half duck tunnel. But Yusei insists they bring along his two new friends. Director Armstrong is a step ahead though, arrests Tenna and takes the old man's deck, leaving Yusei no choice but to duel him. But Yusei doesn't have a deck. If not for the other inmates, with which he can assemble a completely random deck. What's this chain all about? They are hooked up to shock devices and every time someone loses life points, they are zapped. Actually, just you say, as the Enuru simulation isn't connected to the director. This cheating tactic literally shocks you say. Well, that's easy for Armstrong to say, especially since his dual disc isn't connected to the static generator. You say must play defensively, but he's not just losing life points, his deck is thinning fast. On top of that, Armstrong has a constant view of Yusei's hand, always staying one step ahead. Even so, Yusei finds a way to strike back and thanks to some help from his prison buddy, Armstrong gets a lightning vortex as well. Alright Yusei, 
I didn't go through all the trouble to cheat just so you would win. Armstrong synchro summons the Iron Chain Dragon and attacks. But you say knew he was being watched, so he kept a card up his sleeve, so that he can deal 3000 life points damage with a massive combo in a single blow. You say wins the duel, and since Goodwin was watching the whole thing, Armstrong is out. Just like you say and his friends. As a parting gift, you say receives a few cards and a tip on where to find his D wheel. As you say is on the run, he meets up with his promised contact, who jams his tracker and offers to help him reclaim his D wheel. And he's doing it all just to get his friends out of the ghetto. Sadly, he couldn't save his friend, who died in a crash after the passenger seat detached during a ride they took together. Disguised, Yusei heads out, but is discreetly followed by Ushio. He sneaks into a storage area, gains access, even finds his bike, but is surprised by Ushio. So Yusei leaps a 3 meter wall, starts and takes off. Of course, Ushio has no choice but to force a duel right there. But what if his opponent didn't even have a deck? Whatever, Yusei got his old deck back and is plotting his escape strategy when the duel is over. And he can finally synchro summon again. But Ushio counters immediately, wiping out both monsters in the next move. His contact Blister speaks up, urging Yusei to just drive forward. What's exactly what he does, as his path is finally cleared. But whether they're on the track or mid-air, the duel continues. Even though they fall for a full 3 minutes, they land unscratched. Someone must have turned fall damage off. The duel tightens up, as Ushio just got kicked away. Quick flashback of the accident. But the duel isn't over yet. Ushio comes back, determined to finish it and take Yusei back in. Inside the seemingly endless building, they keep racing, making it nearly impossible for either to pin the other down. Ushio then nearly manages to defeat Yusei. But nearly is the key here, as Yusei sacrifices some life points, bringing out enough monsters on the field to synchro summon his Turbo Warrior, which halves the attack points of Ushio's monster, powers up with Synchro Strike, but Ushio isn't about to let that happen. An ally intervenes, the attack goes through and Yusei wins the duel. Score 3-0 for Yusei. Blister stays behind while Yusei speeds off in Super Saiyan 2 mode, falling in front of two kids. Luna and Leo, with their dual spirits, watch closely at Yusei. Both are rich kids and total Jack fanboys. Yusei would be all fired up to face Jack again, if only he hadn't lost his entire memory after his kiss on the ground. But before he can take off, Leo challenges him to a duel. By his second turn, Leo has set up a flawless defense. Two magnet monsters that can block any attack. Along with some extra junk monsters on the field, he feels pretty confident. But Yusei counters by switching all of Leo's monsters positions, breaking through the defense and then smashing it down completely with his Nitro Warrior. One monster down with that half his life points, when another monster is forced back into attack position and with one more blow, the duel's over. Yusei tries to go away, but the kids want him to stick around, so he leaves when they are asleep. Only to get intercepted by Ushio again. But this time, instead of dueling, someone new steps in and hands Yusei an invitation to a Tenkaichi Budokai of duels. Without any threats or stress, because they absolutely don't have his friends as leverage or something. Before Yusei sneaks off, he customizes Luna and Leo's oversized duel discs. They are busy learning about the Black Rose. Meanwhile, Blister gives Yusei a place to crash and plans to get his friends over from satellite. Some old prison buddies show up and they set up a practice duel. Until Jack interrupts. He wants to make things fair for the tournament, so he hands Yusei back his Stardust Tomy. They don't duel just yet, instead they all stick around to watch a match of Joey Wheeler's nephew. This fateful encounter brings Yusei face to face with Leo and his friend. Yusei's sign starts hurting, like Voldemort himself is lurking nearby. Instead, it's the Black Rose, who just finished her duel. She spots Yusei's tattoo and quickly vanishes before anyone can get closer. Leo goes undercover for the tournament and it's time to duel. The matchups are drawn and let's go. Leo's up first against Gregor. They all hope that he has a mark, but it's a no-go, since they expected his sister and not a Leo in costume. 
he pulls out his usual defense strategy, though he quickly loses a chunk of life points and finds himself in a tough spot thanks to the effects of Gregor's monsters. A truck later, he boosts it and goes in for the attack. But it's no use. Gregor activates a trap, summoning his flying fortress, which dismantles Leo's truck and ends the duel. With Leo out in the first round, the scientist spots Luna as the true signer. Next duel, Akiza, the Black Rose, faces off against a guy who's way too committed to cosplay. And you say is secretly the fourth best detective right behind L, L and L. Akiza, is it? The gladiator isn't holding back and goes straight in on the first turn, taking down Akiza's life points, summoning a powerful monster and backing it up with a trap card. But Akiza doesn't waste any time and immediately summons a black rose dragon. Not only is everyone impressed with that, but she also wipes out all cards on the field with it. For real, all cards, even itself. A field spell card should be enough, with which she continually halves the opponent's monster strength and gives her a token each time. She then enslaves his monster, lands a direct attack and smacks it down again when it comes back. The audience can't see a thing though. The Masked Knight can drop Akiza to just 50 life points. You shall taste the agony of defeat and learn not to tread here in mine arena. But she doesn't need any more than that. She destroys Black Garden, brings back her Black Rose Dragon and pulls off a winning move by breaking down the Masked Knight, effectively landing a direct hit. But she didn't emit any visible energy at all. The third duel, Yusei vs Shida. A sore loser barges in who nearly got killed by Shida. Whatever, it's time for the first turbo duel. But not against Shira, but instead against that loser who fairly exchanged Shira's cloth for some fists. Yusei immediately kicks in with 1900, with which loser gains extra turbo counters, which he uses to summon a stronger monster and turn up the heat. And of course, it wouldn't be a duel with Yusei without the Junk Warrior, who doesn't make a difference and is destroyed right away. Then there's an even stronger monster managing to corner Yusei. At least he could save himself for now. Yusei sacrifices some speed counters to draw two more cards, which let him summon two monsters on the field, boosting his hedgehog and synchro summoning the one and only Nitro Warrior. No stardust, but Nitro is fine as well. On to the loser's bracket. Since Jack's opponent forfeited, he's set to do Luna. This time the real Luna, who supposedly crushed pro duelists when she was only three years old. And I'm a blue eyes white dragon, come on now. The opponent tries some twisted mind games, aiming to get her memory back and restore her ability to communicate with dual spirits. To do this, he hypnotizes her and Leo as well and tries using brute force to try to unlock her powers. In Wonderland, Luna rides a magical unicorn and encounters the ancient fairy dragon who shows her glimpses of the past. Back then, she promised to protect the world, finding friendship there to stave off her loneliness. The most exciting duel has grown to a halt. Both her and her opponent are in a deep trance just like Leo. Nothing happens. Until her sign starts glowing. Leo manages to snap her out of the trance, allowing her to continue the duel. The forest is destroyed, her monsters are protected and though she's on the brink of losing, the ancient fairy dragon in her dream world seizes her opponent. And just before it devours him, Luna declares a draw to spare him. A draw means of course they have both lost. But at least Luna has regained her memory. Gregor's deck gets a fresh upgrade, catches Liu snooping around his new deer wheel and on top, Blister has bad news for Yusei. He's made it to their old satellite hideout and has to witness that it's a total mess there. And Yusei's friends are nowhere to be found. With that, the first semi-final starts. Yusei vs Gregor in a turbo duel. Yusei starts as he always does, 
but Gregor wastes no time, bringing out his ace card right from the start, the Flying Fortress. You say is out of speed counters and has an empty field. With a trap, he manages to protect himself for one turn and even tricks the fortress's effect, sending it to the graveyard along with it. You say's draw. And who else would he summon but Junk Warrior, who's unfortunately useless again. But Gregor can Synchro Summon as well. So if you say doesn't end it now, it's over. So he revives Junk Warrior, equips it with a powerful weapon from his arsenal and takes down Gregor's monster, finishing the duel with an effect. Gregor then reveals everything he's been holding back. Goodwin destroyed his village when he lost control of the Crimson Dragon. And now Gregor wants revenge. He speeds up, launching himself into the air, where you say intercepts him mid-air, though one of the spikes flies off, which Goodwin easily caught by himself. The next normal duel starts with the Black Rose. She quickly begins with a thorn garden. It seems that our Black Rose happens to have a green thumb, doesn't she? But this duel won't be easy, since her opponent has studied her every move. He's putting an extra effort because she took him down once before. So literally took him down with the psyche powers which she can't control so well. Akiza puts the pressure on by activating a trap that drains her opponent's life points by 500 each time he summons a plant type monster. With her roses in play, she manages to wear him down a bit at least until he counters everything with his profiler. Then Akiza summons his Black Rose Dragon, weakening his profiler and taking it out in the process. And finally, with a new card he's never seen, she wipes out his remaining life points and secures her place in the finals against you say. A little downtime to focus, strategize and then it's showtime. The final match to decide who gets to face Jack. Both come in with similar tactics. Covering Yusei's field in thorny weeds and Yusei begins as always by summoning Speed Warrior only to sacrifice it for an even stronger monster. Akiza counters right away by doing the same. She summons her Rose Tentacles, destroying Yusei's monster and draining his life points for every token she places on the field. And crazy holograms they've got there. Just picking Yusei up and smashing him back to the ground is wild. Yusei tries to reach Akiza with his Junk Warrior. He finally manages to deal some damage, but Junk Warrior quickly falls to Black Rose Dragon. Not giving up, Yusei realizes her powers are starting to spiral out of control, so he steps it up and finally Synchro summons his Stardust Dragon. Talking sense into her may not be going well, but Stardust Dragon just might be more convincing. When her dragon gets destroyed, she summons it back immediately. Both dragons are destroyed repeatedly to shield the audience, only for each to return again. Just as they are both pulled toward the Shadow Realm, Yusei activates his final trap card, dealing damage equal to Stardust Dragon's attack points. With that, Jack got his next opponent and also Yusei got a little breakthrough to Akiza. Yusei then smacks some men in black just to get a private word with Goodwin. He planned everything down to the last detail. He invited Jack over, who apparently spent his days in satellite by sitting on a throne, had to win Stardust Dragon in a duel for what Jack had really bound and sent into the open sea, knowing Yusei would go after him. And just as you say, rescued Rally from what would have been a fatal situation, Jack stole the Stardust Dragon. He even took Yusei's D wheel, all with Goodwin's approval, knowing Yusei would chase him down. Now, because the two are set to duel, Yusei's friends have finally been freed. The final match starts off a bit differently for Yusei and Jack. I can still anticipate your game and stay two steps ahead of you. Though it's no surprise to anyone that you say summons Junk Warrior right away. The race is close as Jack brings his favorite out to play. You always put dueling second. Well, I'm finally going to put you in your place. Those purple clouds definitely weren't in the weather forecast, but Goodwin saw them coming. He's expecting the Crimson Dragon to rise again in this duel. With Jack's main monster already on the field, Yusei summons Stardust Dragon to keep pace. All the marks start glowing. The city's energy reactor is going crazy once more. Stardust Dragon proves stronger, splitting Jack's Red Dragon Arc Fiend, 
who returns in the next turn. Let's take this turbo duel into overdrive. Just as you say is in deep trouble, the crimson red dragon shows itself. All five signers are gathered in one place. And the fifth is Goodwin himself. He sends everyone into something like a genjutsu, explaining the true stakes of the situation. And even as they travel through the world, Jack continues the duel. Both dragons keep gaining power, while Yusei's and Jack's life points get hammered down. So, for real, since they are feeling every blow, like they are in a shadow duel. With this Stardust Dragon fully powered to its limit, Yusei lands the final blow, kissing Jack goodbye with a finishing strike to end the duel. So Yusei is the new champion. Let's get to a conclusion. We've got 22 good episodes, 4 average ones and no bad ones. The duels were way more action packed and the story turned out to be way better than expected. Glad I'm decided to catch up on this.